live at 801 Morrison Street in Charlestown. My wife and I have lived here since 1963. I had many friends in 1950 that belonged to the fire companies in the county here, but I had a buddy by the name of a friend of mine, Buddy Knight, who asked me if I joined the Citizen Fire Company. I joined the Citizen Fire Company September 11, 1950. At that time, September 11 not, doesn't mean to what it is today. I went in as a volunteer fireman. I guess my first job was chief hoseman. I later became a chief truck driver, later on a first lieutenant, and in 1955, John Vickers was our chief, and he was a model. John got sick, and we didn't want to take John's title away from him, so we established assistant chief. At that time, I was first lieutenant, and we just elevated everybody, so I became assistant chief in 1956. And that is when people supply burnt. One of, to me, one of the most memorable fires. It was a big fire, but at that time, we just didn't have the water supply to fight a fire like that. Some of the, one of the funnier stories that I remember, we had to ring a bell for a country alarm. A man by the name of Pat Darlington was ringing the bell, ding, ding, ding. A man by the name of Ike Huff was driving one of the fire trucks. He pulled on out of the station and left Pat to ring the bell, went off and left him. Uh, one of the most tragic fires that I helped with was the Miller Chemical Fire. I actually turned that alarm in. I was in Jerry's restaurant about 2.30 in the morning, the day of the fire. A truck driver came in and said he smelled smoke. I told him we were talking to a volunteer fireman. But needless to say, we went up towards Miller Chemical in my car, and there's where the smoke was coming from. I came back to Jerry's restaurant, or went back to it, and turned the alarm in, went back to Miller Chemical, and there's a tractor and trailer driver parked asleep in front of the place. Needless to say, we woke him up and got him away from there. I spent the rest of the night, like a lot of other people, the rest of that night and the next day. The most tragic fire we had, I said, was Miller Chemical because Ray Huffenegel, a member of the independent fire company, was in the nozzle end of a two and a half inch hose on a porch. The porch actually burned out underneath them and Ray fell into the fire and we could not rescue him. His funeral was held at the Charlestown Presbyterian Church, East Washington Street, and a very sad affair and the most tragic part of memorable part of us, the fact that at the end of the service, all the firemen went up and went by the casket. And needless to say, when we left that church, there was a lot of tears shed. Miller Chemical manufactured fertilizer material. And needless to say, uh, it's explosive and the fumes are bad. At that time, you didn't hear, at least I don't remember hearing about hazmac. If we had a fire like that today, or anything like that today, the first thing is done, we call the hazmat people in to assist us. That's been a big improvement over years in the past. We had more fires uh, that lost more lives, but I was not there. Ambrose, Ambrose, Mr. John Ambrose owned a house out in Ransom, had a fire there at one time. I think we lost three lives. I was at that one. The reason I joined the fire company was I want to do something to help the community. And for any young person, man or woman today, if they want to do something, help the volunteer fire companies. We've come a long ways in safety. Years ago, we used to ride on the back of fire trucks. That doesn't happen anymore. Everything's closed cabs. We now have paid medics and paramedics. That is one of the greatest things that's happened in this community because they're Johnny on the spot and on the road in a hurry. I do not fight fires anymore. I'm now 82 years old, but they do allow me to be assistant fire police. I have certain training I have to go through, but I do not have to have the training as fighting fire nationally. So I help with accidents, uh, with traffic and fires, but I try to keep out of everybody else's way too. But there is training going on all the time in the fire companies to keep up on the methods of fighting fires. There's always training. Uh, sometimes individual companies have training, and other times 
we might meet at uh, one of the other companies. All the companies get together. But it's always training, always training to keep up on things. I would say that Jefferson County has just as nice equipment and men how to operate it as anywhere in the country. That's a broad statement, but a couple of years ago I had a distant relative to come and visit us here in Charlestown. And he wanted to see our fire station. He said, can you meet me at 3 o'clock? I said, I'll be there. After showing our station and our equipment, he said, Glenn, I work for a paid fire department in Florida, and we don't have equipment and stuff like this, a building like this. So that's the reason I make a statement that we just have the equipment and men who know how to operate it. As I said, I am assistant fire police, and men who fight fires have to have physical examinations. I have to have the same thing. I have to go to the doctor and have a physical examination to do a job as assistant fire police. One job that I helped with as assistant fire police was in Daniel Road a year or so ago when there was a bad wreck and there were several people hurt. We had to call in two helicopters and then land in the pasture field over there to take the wounded out either to Fairfax or Washington Hospital, depending on how bad the case is. Uh, the helicopters uh, sort of put cold chills over me because I was in Korea in 1951 and earlier part of 52, and it was fighting going on, and the helicopters saved a lot of men's lives over there because the roads in Korea were not, needless, not very smooth. So every time I see a helicopter come in to take someone out, I think about those people over there. They were strapped on litter outside the helicopter. They were not, didn't have a medic or paramedic stand beside or sitting beside them as they do today. And it's just a great thing to have the service of these people to come in and pick up people when they get hurt in an accident or a fire or whatever. I just wonder what the mission of the world is. That's a big question, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? We, you know, we're all tied together somehow, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yes, sir. Well, the, the, the being in the fire company, I actually turned this on, if I may, Glenn. Being in a fire company, that makes you, reminds you more and more of the need to help and depend on each other. Or does, did you, you know, does that, is that what it does? It reinforces? It sure does, Jim. It reinforces me to let everybody know that we need to help other people. I can't imagine what it would be to be not volunteering. My advice to the people of this community need to know, as I said earlier, that we are a volunteer and every dollar that is donated to the volunteer fire companies in this county is greatly appreciated. And needless to say, it takes a lot of money to operate a fire company. Yes, sir.